In the opening scene of part three, we are shown a flashback of Mora and Daniel spending time together in bed as husband and wife. It is clear that they were married but Mora has somehow forgotten everything about their life together. While in bed, Mora talks about how realities are just constructs of their brains. But Daniel declares it rubbish and goes on about his day. Back in the present, Daniel wakes up on the floor of the room where Mora had locked him. He begs her to open the door and give him his remote but she refuses and walks away, leaving him inside. When she gets back on the ship, it is shaking violently because of a storm. Some of the survivors are in the captain's cabin, but no one knows how to steer the ship. Soon, the storm takes over the ocean liner and moves it along. Without the captain to control the ship, they will all be dead by the morning. At the same time, the woman who touched the black protruding object on the wall grows sicker by the second. She hides her hand from the others because it has turned completely black. They decide to go into the engine room and warn the others working to keep the ship moving. Back in the mental asylum, Daniel opens the window that is sealed with the ship's hull from the outside. He finds several wires coming down a vent and decides to climb up in hopes of reaching the ship. A while later, she finds another tunnel that leads him to yet another reality. This is where we find out that there are shafts present underneath every surviving passenger's beds. Each shaft leads to a different place associated with the respective passenger's past. This is why the shaft under Mora's bed leads to the mental asylum, and one under the captain's bed leads to his old house. Back on the ship, Tove, alongside her parents, who have also survived till now are running to the engine room. The mother, however, doesn't want to go in because she is overly religious and thinks God wants them to die outside. Tove tries convincing her otherwise but is asked to leave her alone. In the end, her father stays back with his wife, holding her as the compartment fills up with water. They pray to God for the last time and accept their fate. In the engine room, the remaining survivors reunite. A man named Olik walks outside to close the bulkheads and prevent more water from entering the ship. He is followed by the Chinese prostitute who has grown fond of the man throughout the journey. They go outside in the storm and try their best to survive. However, while they are at it, the prostitute sees her mother standing by the railing. She runs towards the woman, only to realize that she was looking at an illusion. Oluk stops her from going any further but before they return back safely, a big wave washes him off the ship. The prostitute looks at the sea and breaks into tears, mourning the death of her only loved one. Somewhere else, Mora finds out the captain is missing and rushes to the shaft under his bed to check if he is in there. She goes through the tunnel and reaches the captain's old house. To her surprise, she is greeted by the captain's late wife. She harasses Mora, aggressively holding her arm and asking her why she is there. Mora somehow manages to get away from her and makes a run back to the ship. She then goes to Daniel's room and finds his shaft. Upon walking into his memory, she finds several pictures of herself and him. The surprising part is that the kid found on the lost ship is also in the pictures, and they look like a happy family. The room is her and Daniel's bedroom when they were a married couple, and she still had her memories. Mora is more confused than ever whereas Daniel is trying to make his way to her, shifting through several memories. He reaches a grave and digs in to get to his son's room where he is hiding. We find out that the kid's name is Elliot, and he is Mora and Daniel's child. Daniel promises to save Mora and asks the kid to stay in the room until they fix the situation. He is aware that Henry is trying to get to the kid and wants his son to be safe. Before leaving, Daniel receives a ring from Elliot that is Mora's wedding ring. Outside, Wilson uses his tablet to scan through the passenger's pasts and finds out Elliot's location. He immediately sets off to get the kid and take him to his grandfather. After returning to the ship, Daniel looks for his wife and realizes she went into the shaft under his bed. He follows her there and is sorry that she had to find out the truth this way. Mora is still in shock and unable to believe what happened to her. They both hold each other and cry before leaning in for a kiss. Suddenly, Mora gets a flashback of her past life and pulls away. She has experienced so much in the past few days that she starts questioning everything she has ever known. Daniel calms her down and explains that they are stuck in a simulation. Everything that exists on the boat and the entire boat itself are just codes that they have been manipulated to see as real objects. It is almost as if they are living in a virtual world and nothing is real. Mora still doesn't understand most of it but Daniel doesn't have the time to explain. He needs to save the ship from the storm first and that can be done by changing the codes. The duo climbs into the ship again and Daniel tells Mora about a key that she hid somewhere. It is the key to the pyramid Elliot was holding and is the only way to stop the simulation loop. If the key doesn't unlock the pyramid, their entire trip on the ship will restart, 
and they will be stuck in the loop forever. Mora pulls her necklace open and shows him that she does in fact have a similar key. She also reveals that she got it from her brother in the envelope she received before coming here. Meanwhile, in the engine room, Lucian gets a seizure, making his wife and Jerome take him to his room to get his shots. This leaves only two Spanish men behind to work. Suddenly, a loud explosion takes place, and one of them is killed. At the same time, Lucian's condition gets worse by the second before he finally dies in Jerome's arms. Similarly, Tove's parents and a third survivor also die when the hallways are filled with water. In the end, the only people left are the priest, the prostitute, Tove, Mora, Daniel, and the captain who is still missing. Next, we see Wilson get to Elliot and kidnap him. The kid is taken to Henry who shows him what is happening on the ship through monitors. The scene of disaster and deaths are too difficult for the kid to watch but he does so anyway. Henry then makes an announcement to the passengers and asks his daughter to stop trying to halt the simulation. He is confident that everyone on the ship will die and the loop will continue once again. To ensure his win, he removed the shaft under Mora's bed by removing its code from the simulation. At last, he tells the parents that Elliot is with him and that if they want to see the kid alive, they will have to hand over the key. Mora finally accepts defeat as the ship moves towards a whirlpool in the middle of the ocean. It drops inside it and ends up on another part of the sea filled with identical ships. They are the deserted ships from numerous loops before theirs. We see that the captain is on one of the deserted ships and can see the new one join them. Henry then makes a shocking revelation to Elliot. He discloses that he is also trapped in the simulation, and it is all because of Mora. Elliot doesn't believe him at first but his grandfather promises to show him the truth if given a chance. Elliot gives him the chance and is taken to the room downstairs. There, Henry injects him with a drug that brings back the memories from before he was in the simulation. It turns out that Elliot had some kind of disease and was on the verge of death. Mora didn't want to let her son die and hence, created this simulation where they can stay in the loop and be together forever. She experimented on her own kid to save his life, but has caused more pain to him since then. Henry also explains that Daniel is the one keeping the simulation running and not him. Both parents want to fix the simulation and create an ideal world for their family. Back on the ship, the captain joins the few remaining survivors. Mora finally tells everyone that they are stuck in a simulation that isn't real. Everything that has happened to them on the ship is just a memory. She also asks them if they remember getting on the ship, and no one seems to remember it. Still, they think she is crazy and want to get out of the ship as fast as they can. Mora tries to stop them but is unsuccessful. In the lower compartment, Daniel is fixing the strange device that is supposed to run the simulation. Because of his expertise, the survivors aren't dead yet, and the loop hasn't restarted. His aim now is to destroy the entire simulation and keep only the one that is perfect for his family. The survivors, except for the captain and Mora, walk down the hallway to find an exit. However, they have to stop when the black substance protruding from the walls starts growing at a faster rate. They separate and run in different directions, but the black substance is everywhere. In the meantime, Mora and the captain get into another shaft to look for her father. Mora desperately wants to trade the key for her child. Suddenly, a loud siren is heard everywhere. This is because Daniel has successfully recoded the simulation according to his wish. It causes the ship to lead the survivors into their pasts. Some end up on a deserted battlefield, while others are in Mora's childhood home. While trying to find out where they are, they switch memories which confuses them even more. The prostitute then sees Olek and is shocked at how he is still alive. Upon following him, she is led back into the ship. The same happens with the other survivors as they find themselves together again. Henry realizes what his son-in-law has done and is worried that he is going to damage the entire simulation and put their lives at risk. Because of the recoding, everything in the simulation starts to disappear. The survivors watch in awe as a large ball of light forms over their heads and eat everything around them. As this happens, the captain and Moore reach the mental asylum yet again. They feel the effect of the change in codes but are distracted when Wilson arrives and discloses that he has been on Henry's side since the beginning. He immediately uses his remote device to kill the captain. Mora freezes in shock before shaking him and asking him to get up. Wilson doesn't let her mourn and pulls her away before taking her to Henry. The man finally has the key and the pyramid with him. He tells his daughter that she is the creator of the simulation and accuses her of causing everyone so much pain. Then, she is pushed into a seat and injected with a drug. After that, he uses the key on the pyramid but to his surprise, nothing happens. This is when we find out that when Daniel changed the code of the simulation, he also changed the way one can continue the loop. Suddenly, everything goes quiet, and Mora wakes up on the ground, on a landscape. She then finds a cross nearby that leads her to her son's room where he was hiding earlier. Daniel joins her soon and claims that he has finally found a way to break the simulation. The power of the pyramid has been changed to a pyramid puzzle in Elliot's room. 
and the key is Mora's ring. Using the puzzle and the ring, Mora is able to break the simulation finally, and wake up in the real world. She opens her eyes and finds herself attached to a machine that was keeping her in the simulation. Around her are the survivors of the ship who have also deliberately volunteered to be a part of this project. Mora is very confused when she receives a message from her brother on a screen. The message welcomes her to reality, and reveals it is the year 2099. In the last scene, Mora looks out the window, and sees that she is on a space station. Wait for season 2 to come out. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.